Hey guys. Oh wow, I have like, hold on. I gotta approve some people to come on in so that way they can get this training. I hope that you guys saw my message where I told you that I would be a little bit late today um, due to due to an interview that I have to do. Um, yeah, I put the, hey, Anita, so I just seen your message. I put the, um, the message in at about 9.30 this morning and you guys really wanna turn on your notifications for the group, especially how this year we're gonna be doing all these trainings because you wanna be able to get the messages, right? So I think like around 9.30, I looked at the schedule and I realized that I had an interview to do at 11 o'clock and I knew that I wouldn't finish by 11.30. Um, so that's why I put the post saying, hey guys, I was gonna be a little bit late today. And then what's so crazy is that the interview that I just finished doing, um, I had asked him a question asking him, you know, what do he, what do he think, what is his predictions? for the coaching industry, right? Uh, this person has been in the coaching industry for over 20 years. And I said, well, what is, what, is the, what is the predictions that you see for the coaching industry? And one of the answers that he gave was that, you know, over the years, he said 20 years ago, coaching really wasn't big. Um, it wasn't much people that were coaching and they started through blogging and different marketing activities. And then as the years went by, you noticed that there were just a few that dominated. Right. And so he basically said that the prediction of the coaching industry now is that, you know, more and more people are becoming coaching coaches. And because of that, you know, it's going to be harder for you to get clients, which is what I'm seeing. It's so crazy that he gave this answer because of what we're going to talk about today. Um, but he said, you know, more and more people are going to be becoming coaches. And because of that, it's going to be more harder to get clients, which means that only the people who understand marketing and know how to dominate with their marketing are the people who's going to be able to stand out, um, are the people who's going to be able to withstand uh, through these changes and through thousands and thousands of people that are being added to the coaching industry. And when he said that, it just made so much sense. Hey, Kim, what's up, girl? Um, you know, when he said that, it just made so much sense to me because you know, that is what I see with the coaching industry, which is why I like to talk about marketing a lot because it is important. And if you don't know how to stand out and if you don't know how to capture your ideal client's attention, it is going to be really difficult to compete against the people who are taking their time to master this and to be consistent with how they show up and how they market their services, you know. Um, so that was a really good answer. I didn't even plan on sharing that with you guys. But again, like I said, I just finished the interview. So it just kind of came up for me. Okay, so let me just open this here so I can get my comments. And then we're going to jump into the stuff. So um, the first question that I have for you guys, and those of you who are in the replay, please, please, please leave your responses below as well. Just because you're not here live does not mean that your responses do not matter. I want your responses. So I'm planning to do a live workshop. It's either going to happen in Philadelphia or New York City. Most likely it'll be in New York. I'm planning on doing a live workshop for a small group of 10 people um, in March. And I, would, I, I was thinking about doing the workshop all on stories where people can come and craft their stories with me and learn how to use stories in their marketing and story, 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 story. Um, but I decided to ask you guys, what do you want? If you get to spend a day with me live for me to help you with any aspect of your business, what would that be, right? What would be cha life changing for you? What would, what would you want me to help you with that will make 2020 uh, the best year for you, okay? So let me know that below. Take time to think about it. Again, those of you on the replay, please give me your responses below, okay? All right, so seven marketing mistakes you don't want to make in 2020. That is what we're talking about today. This is our first ever Money Marketing Monday with Niala. And let me tell you how I got that name. So my celebrity, uh, what's the right word? You know how when you go to branding companies and they ask you, well, what celebrity do you associate your brand with? Well, my celebrity is Candy Burst. 
Um, she was in a group, a singing group when I was young. And she's also on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. She um, is a part owner of a network marketing company. Um, she's an all around uh, entrepreneur, business owner, boss, CEO, all of that. And so she had did a song last year where she called it Money Making Monday. Have you guys seen that? And she's like, it's Money Making Monday. And um, I, I thought of that. So that's where the, the title came from. Okay, Money Marketing Monday, because when you know how to market, you make more money. And so that's what our Monday trainings is gonna be all about this year. And I'm really, really, really excited to bring this to just my group members. Um, okay, so there we have it. <laughs> um, Anita said, please state your exact question again. So the exact question is, if you get to spend a day with me in March, live and in living color in New York, what would you like me to help you with as it pertains to your business? What would you like to accomplish? What would you like to, me to help you with as it pertains to your business? Again, this is a live thing, not an online thing. So I really want you guys to think about that because being able to get the help live is very different than being able to get the, the help online, okay? All right, so let's jump in. Let's jump in. The biggest reason why, you know, talking about our marketing mistakes this year is going to be really important is because uh, one of the complaints or some of the complaints that a lot of coaches gave last year, number one is not getting engagement on their, um, you know, social media content, not getting enough leads, um, not getting enough clients, you know, not growing their audience fast enough, you know, struggling to beat the algorithms. You know, these are just some of the things that a lot of coaches say that they struggle with. And the solution for all, most of these things really is for you to get better at your marketing. So just use the, you know, algorithms for an example, you know, you can beat the algorithms when you know how to market, right? When you know how to build up excitement, build up engagement, drum up momentum. When you know how to do that through your marketing, you can beat algorithms, right? When you know how to do that through your marketing, you'll capture more people's attention and in return, you'll get more leads, more engagement, more sales. And so the solution for all of those problems is really being better at your marketing. And so I figured the first lesson that we need to do this year, it needs to be on mistakes that you guys was making last year that you need not make this year. And what do you have to do about it? to be able to market better, all right? So first thing I wanna talk about is what is marketing? I looked it up online, here's what I found. Marketing is what you say and how you say it when you wanna explain how awesome your product is and why people should buy it. I'll say it again. Marketing is what you say and how you say it when you want to explain how awesome your product is and why people should buy it. Now, what I believe most coaches do wrong is thinking that they don't have to market, and again, this community is filled with coaches. So you guys are gonna be able to feel me on this. A lot of coaches, they go, they get their certification or they come up with this idea that they know how to do something, they wanna teach, they wanna coach, but they forget that this is a business too. And with every, you know, every service that you sell, everything that you do, there's marketing. You gotta be able to get people's attention, all right? So, you know, it, just to give you an example, and this is no shade to anybody, but I gotta say it. You know, I'm always seeing these ads with people saying to coaches, you know, come and learn from me. I know why you're struggling because you're a coach. You're not a marketer. You're a coach. You don't want to do marketing, right? And it's so crazy that while they're telling you that, they're marketing to you. On a Facebook ad, they're marketing to you, telling you, you're a coach. You don't need to market. And that makes no sense to me. Marketing is social media. Marketing is paid advertising. Marketing is press releases. Marketing is speaking. Marketing is interviews, TV spots, billboards. Marketing is how you get yourself out there. So that way you can do two things. One, capture people's attention. Two, get them to buy. Are you guys listening? Give me a yes below if you guys are following me. So your marketing should do two things. One, get people to pay attention to you to get them to buy. Once they start in the buying process, now we're talking about sales. 
How do you get them to buy? Well, maybe you do it through a sales call. Maybe you do it through a sales page, maybe, right? So now we're talking about sales, but you got to get them to the point where they're going to go to that sales page. You can get them to the point where they are going to book that call. And that's what the marketing does. So are you guys following me? Because again, I want to start here before we even start talking about the mistakes, because the truth is you really need to know what marketing is and what the goal of your marketing is. So that way you could do better at it. You got to be able to get people's attention, right? You got to be able to get people's attention. And so there's some pieces to that, you know, that help get people's attention. We're going to talk about that today. All right. Um, so let's get into the mistakes that I feel the seven mistakes that I've seen people make and that you don't want to bring into 2020. Okay. So number one, and this is just going to go back to what I was saying. Number one is not having a marketing strategy and a plan. Okay. Not having a marketing strategy and a plan. Right. So that's what I was saying when I say, you know, a lot of coaches, it's like, I want to coach, but you, you don't keep into your head or have in the forefront of your head that in order to get coaching clients, you got to be able to market yourself. See what I'm saying? And so, you know, you don't have a marketing strategy and you don't have a plan. And usually people fall in two places and you can tell me below which one is you. So the first group of people who don't have a strategy and don't have a plan, they do what I call sporadic marketing. You could just give me a one if you can resonate with that sporadic marketing. And what that means is you just, you know, I'm gonna just throw up a post today. Yeah, I'm gonna throw up a quote tomorrow. Yeah, well, I don't know what I'm selling. Well, I'm gonna just do a live stream, but I'm not sure what the live stream is gonna do, but I'm showing up. That's sporadic, right? And then the second group of people, again, if you resonate with me, give me a one. The second group of people, okay, they jump from strategy to strategy. Again, we're talking about the mistake of not having a strategy and a plan. So the second group of people, because they don't have a plan and they never mapped out a strategy for themselves, they just jump from technique to technique. If they see this coach talking about podcasting this week, I want to start a podcast. And then, you know, next month, you know, someone's talking about workshops. Okay, I'm going to teach them workshops. So they jump from strategy to strategy. Why? Because there's no clear strategy, marketing strategy and plan for their business. So that's the first mistake that I think, you know, that I see a lot of people make. And making that mistake, what happens is you will struggle to create real and consistent results because your strategy isn't consistent marketing isn't consistent you don't got the plan so you don't know the step by step so how can you create real and consistent results and what i mean by that is yeah you might sell some books you might sell a few spots somewhere for for, for less than 20 dollars but is it real is it consistent is it substantial where you're going to be able to reach your ending and your ultimate goal which is maybe to make a certain amount of money every month maybe to buy a new home maybe to do some traveling whatever it is that you want to do are you set up to be able to do that no because if you don't have a strategy or a plan you can't create consistent results here's a mic drop for you you cannot measure chaos. Write that down. You cannot measure chaos. So if you don't have a clear strategy and plan, you can't measure your numbers to be able to get better every month to see an increase because there's no strategy or plan. It's just chaos. You can't measure chaos. Okay, you can't measure chaos. So the biggest thing is not having a strategy and a plan. If this is you, then that's the first thing you want to be writing down that you want to be able to accomplish before the end of January. Because in order for you to do good, better marketing so you can make more sales in 2020, you got to start with a strategy and then you got to take that strategy and put it into a plan. And so that means that if that's you, that is the first thing you need to be worried about in January. Take everything else out your head. Because it doesn't matter what you do, you got to have a strategy and a plan, okay? Number two, here's the second mistake that a lot of people are making. Number two, not knowing your client. And how do I know or how do you know if this is you? Because your messaging is not connecting. 
So you're showing up, you're being consistent, you're marketing. You may have even came up with a strategy and said, listen, my strategy is going to be to teach a webinar. And so I'm going to take action and I'm going to do it. And you go to do it, but no one really signs up. Why? Because the messaging is not connecting. Why? Because you don't know your client well enough. And then there's some of you who do know your client well enough, but you're not using their language. And here, this one is going to probably touch on some toes, but I have to say it because I experienced this too. A lot of the people that know their ideal client, but struggle to use their language are people that only think about like where I used to be. Does that make sense? Like, like, like my ideal client is where I used to be. And I know how I felt back then. I know how I felt. So because I felt that way, that's what all my clients is feeling. So these are the words I'm going to use. Instead of using their language. Again, I'm just, keep, you know, some people, you know, your client, some people you've done the research, some people you could tell me your client inside and out but you're still not using their language. Here's an example of what not using their language means. And this is real simple. And I'm using this example because I've been seeing this as a conversation online lately. Let's say that you are a, whatever, you, you're a coach and you help moms, okay? And so in your marketing message, you keep using the word mompreneurs. I help mompreneurs, calling all mompreneurs. Are you a mompreneur, right? That's what you're using because that's what you, you know, that's who you say you help. You help moms who own a business. So you came up with the snazzy and jazzy name of mompreneurs. But let's say your moms don't identify themselves as mompreneurs. Let's say they just identify themselves as small business owners or coaches or lawyers, right? but you're so stuck on mompreneurs because it sounds good. That's what I mean when I say you're not using their language and because of that, your messaging is not gonna connect. All right, so just to make sure you guys are getting this point, the mistake is not knowing your client enough. And so if that's you, you need to do some research to really get to know your client so you could create better marketing for your client. But the second group of you who know who your client is, are you using their language or are you using your language? Just let me know below. Give me a three in the chat box if you're following me. It's important in your messaging to connect that you use their language because your marketing, the, you remember what I said, the goal of the marketing is one, capture people's attention, to get them to want to buy, not get them to buy, that's sales. Sales get them to buy, marketing gets them to want to buy. Do you guys understand the difference, right? And so if these are the goals that your marketing has, then that means that you have to know your client well enough so the messaging could connect because the messaging is what captures their attention. Does that make sense? That makes sense? Okay, guys, I'm seeing the three. It makes sense. So your marketing has to captivate their attention and then it has to connect with them. And so in order to connect with people, you got to be able to speak their language, not your language. And so again, and see, I can understand why a lot of people might make this mistake because even me, myself, back in the days when I started teaching social media marketing, I would tell people, like, if you don't know your ideal client, it's who you used to be. I used to say that all the time. It's who you used to be. Hey, Desiree darling, it's who you used to be. And a lot of people would say the same thing now. You know, your ideal client is where you were 10 years ago. Just because your ideal client is where you used to be, don't mean your ideal client speaks like you. And so that's the reason why as marketers and people, you know, as marketers, content marketing, social media marketing, whatever it is, we need to do the right amount of research because we need to be able to use their language in our messaging if we want to be able to captivate and connect with them. Does that make sense? Okay, let's move on. The third problem. So number one is not having a marketing strategy and plan. Number two is not knowing your, not knowing your client enough. Number three is not being clear on how you help them. 
So remember, we said that your marketing should help them see why they should buy something. For those of you who just came in, let me read the definition again. Marketing is what you say and how you say it when you explain, so let me say it again. Marketing is what you say and how you say it when you want to explain how awesome your product is and why people should buy it, okay? And so your marketing is supposed to help them see why they should buy something. So that means you got to be able to clearly articulate why they need to buy something. And it goes back to the whole me centric thing. A lot of coaches make the mistake of being very me centric. So when they are trying to convince you on why you should buy it, they would say, oh, because I know how to do this. I can run your Facebook ads. I get the lowest uh, uh, leads, you know, the lowest click through rate. You know, I can design your website because I'm the bomb at graphic design. I, 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 when your marketing is supposed to be focused and based on your clients. Okay, so here's how you, you make sure your marketing is based, is speaking to your clients. Number one, you speak about benefits. Okay, so what are the benefits that people could get from working with you? That's how you get them to want to buy something. What are the outcomes people are going to get from working with you? That's what makes them want to buy something. What is the experience like when working with you? That's how you get them to buy something, right? Why should they act now, right? That's how you get people to buy something. So instead of having me-centric marketing, where number one, you're not clear on how you can help them. And even though you're not clear, all you're talking about is what you can do, that's not gonna capture their attention because they don't care about what you could do. It sounds harsh, but that's the reality. People don't care about what you know and what you could do. People care about what it's gonna do for them. And that's the reason why I, told, I said to you in the beginning, the gentleman that I was interviewing today before I came on today, what really you know, uh, spoke to me in his interview is what he said is that if coaches don't start to grasp that you're gonna left be left behind because you got to be able to dominate when it comes to marketing in your industry right and how are you going to do that if you can't articulate how you help people and all you talk about is what you know how to do does that make sense <clears throat> excuse me does that make sense Right? So give me a yes in the chat box if that makes sense to you. Nobody cares about what you know how to do, but they do care about what it's gonna do for them and their family and their future. If you're a health coach, they don't care that you got 16 years of experience. They don't care that you got a coach, coaching certification. But what they do care about is what it's gonna do for them when they lose that weight. Are you able to deliver the results in a specific amount of time. What is the experience like of working with you as a health coach to get me to this desired outcome? What they care about is what they're gonna get at the end, okay? So let's recap this one more time. The first mistake is not having a marketing, marketing strategy and plan. The second mistake is not knowing your client. Third mistake, not being clear on how you can help them, okay? Fourth mistake. The fourth mistake is not being consistent. And when I say consistency, I'm not only talking about consistency and showing up. While that is the most important, I'm also talking about consistency in your message, consistency in the problems you solve, consistency in the people who you solve those problems for. And if you don't have consistency in these areas, you are going to struggle to build trust. And what do we always talk about in marketing? To get people to want to buy your service, they have to what? Know, like, and trust you. So if you are not consistent in showing up, if you're not consistent in your messaging, if you're not consistent in the problems you solve and who you solve it for, then they're not going to be able to build trust because they're like, wait a minute. I don't know. They're going to look for someone who's consistent, right? So if on, you know, on Facebook, you're a life coach, but then over on Instagram, you're baking, that's a problem. Now, hear me out. Baking, and I just want to use this example, 
baking might just be a hobby of yours and it's something you know how to do and it's an income stream for you, which is great. But if your centralized message is life coaching and being able to, let me make something up, being able to help people, you know, build confidence, for example, if that's your centralized message, then whether I go to Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, I should be able to see that. I should be able to see that, right? And so that means it has to be consistent and concise throughout the, the whole, wherever you go, your website, your whole, wherever you go, with everything that you do, the events that you create, the partnerships that you create, it all matters. And it has to be consistent. Does that make sense, guys? Give me a one in the chat box if that makes sense, okay? Now, here's the next mistake. And this one is a biggie. This is the sixth mistake. And that is not paying enough attention to your web presence. And this is something that I don't talk about a lot because I'm all about messaging and marketing. But the truth is your look matters. If your brand don't look right, how are you going to build trust? Okay. And, you know, some examples of what that looks like is number one, if I go to your personal page, can I tell that you're a business owner? Can I tell that you're a health coach? Can I tell that you are a relationship coach when I go to your personal page? or you only have it on your Facebook business page? Can I tell that this is a lifestyle that you're living, right? That's number one. Number two, your marketing says who you are, what you do, who you do it for, why you do it, and why should they care, right? That's what your marketing says. So when somebody goes to one of your web, you know, uh, real estate on, on the web, they need to be able to see that because first impressions matter. If I go to your website, it's like, I used to be a hairdresser, okay? And one of the things that a lot of people would make fun of with hairdressers is that, you know, a lot of times you're doing people hair, but you're so busy doing people hair that not all the time your hair looks the best. And one of the things that I learned when I was in cosmetology school is that your appearance and the way your hair and stuff looks matters because when people wanna hide, wanna come to your salon, if you look jacked up and I can see all your tracks, I'm not letting you near my weave, <laughs> okay? I'm just saying, right? <laughs> so, you know, that's what I mean by that. If you're saying that, you know, you're going to help somebody make a million dollars, and then when you go to your website, your website looked like a child created it, I don't trust you. I don't trust you enough. And what does our marketing have to do? Capture people's attention, get them to want to buy. Who do people buy from? People who they know, like, and trust. And so that's the reason why your web presence matter. And here's what a lot of coaches do. And again, I know this is going to step on some toes, but if I don't say it, then you're not going to change it. And you need to make changes for 2020. If you know that you designed your own website or you, you know, you was like with me when I first started, I don't know, I had to do what I had to do. You know what I mean? I'd rather you don't have it because if it's not showing you in a good light, please take 25 to $50 and invest on with someone on Fiverr who can create a lead page for you where at least you can tell them who you are, what you do, how you help them, why you help them. And here's a free gift and dead that website. Because if it's not showing you in a good light, it's not helping you. When people go to your Facebook and they click it and they go over there, the first thing they're like is, if you're telling me that, you know, you're a relationship coach, but every time I go on your page, you, you talking nonsense about men or whatever, then how am I going to believe that you can help me? This is what I'm talking about, guys. Your web presence matters. And if you're not going to get an alignment, and so that way there's consistency in your message, who you talk to and all of that, then it's better to just not have it. I'm only using the website as an example, but we could use an example in different ways here, right? It's like a dentist. If you say you're a dentist and you can help, you're, I'm a dentist. I'm an expert, high level, high end dentist. And then when you smile, you got four teeth missing and it's yellow in different spots. Uh, see what I'm saying, guys? It matters. It matters. 
Now, because I'm somebody that, you know, came up in this space a little different, I would always say that I understand if you don't, you're not in a position right now to invest to get someone else to do your website or invest to do new pictures or whatever. If that is your case, then don't have it. That's what I'm saying. If you know you can't do it right, don't do it. Get an alternative solution because your web presence matter and first impressions matter. Hey, Lois. Hey, darling. Kim said, right, marketing creates the same message of who you are on social media pages. Absolutely, right? And your web presence matter. Now here's number seven. We're doing good today. Here's number seven. Using the wrong marketing strategies. Using the wrong marketing strategies. That's the mistake that you're making and you need to not make it this year. So we go, what did we say? We said, after this live stream, you need to create some goals for yourself that by the end of this month, certain things is gonna be done, right? So one of those things is getting clear on, you know, who your ideal client is and the language that they speak making sure that you create, choose a strategy and create a plan around that strategy, making sure that each part of your web presence that you have looks cohesive, messaging is cohesive and shows you in a good light, the entrepreneur you want to be, okay? Not the entrepreneur that you were last year or the entrepreneur you are now, but the entrepreneur you want to be, right? So your website needs to reflect that. Um, your web presence needs to reflect that. And then the next thing is you want to choose the right strategy because you can't create a plan if you don't have the right strategy. Let's talk about that. I believe that every mark, every person should have marketing strategies that fit their lifestyle, their personality, and their goals. If you do not think about these things, that's why you're struggling with your marketing. Let me give you an example. Let's say that one of the marketing strategies that you want to use in your business is live streaming or video marketing, YouTube, right? Let's say that's something that you want to do. However, you don't have the personality to be able to come out and be like, hey guys, hype up people. You know, if you don't have that type of personality, then I don't think that's the right strategy for you to use. Why? Because what did we say? Everything you need to do, it needs to show you in a good light so your marketing can do what it needs to do. See what I'm saying? So you want to make sure that you pick the right strategy. Here's another one. That one is personality. Let me give you an example with lifestyles. Let's say you, you decide that you want challenges to be a strategy. So you're going to create a marketing plan that consists of different challenges throughout the year. Okay. However, you run a full-time job, you're a wife or a husband, you have children, you help, you hold offices in the church. You got a few travel um, on your calendar this year. You just don't even have the time to show up five days and 10 days every day for a challenge. It don't fit your lifestyle. And so that means that that's the strategy you don't need to be using. Give me a one in the chat box if that's making sense for you all. You have to pick strategies that fit your lifestyle, your personality, and your goals. Because if you don't, you're going to struggle with that strategy. You understand what I'm saying? Here's another example that has to do with goals. You might decide that you want to do summits as your marketing strategy, right? The point of doing, number one, the point of doing summits is number one, generating leads. And number two, it's a long game. So summits don't bring in all the profit in the beginning. It brings in profit in the back end. So it's playing the long game because doing a summit means that you have about three minimum, three months of preparation. During those three months, you're not making no money from the summit. You're working on it. You're getting it ready. You're, do you understand? So it's the long game, right? But let's say your goal right now is you have a kid that's getting ready to go to boarding school. And within the next six months, you need to be able to come up with a certain amount of money to take care of your kid. Why are you going to choose Summit as the strategy? It doesn't fit your goals. It might be a great strategy, but right now with the goals that you have, it just doesn't fit. Does that make sense, guys? So you got to make sure that whatever strategy you go with, again, I told you, I remember last time when we did this a training, when I talked to you guys about offers and I said, 
Look, every strategy is right. Marketing works, podcasting works, blogging works, blogging works, videos work, you know, offline work, they all work. Paid advertising works, it all works. But what fits your lifestyle, your personality, and your goals? That is how you make the decision on choosing the right marketing strategy for you. So that way you can create a solid plan that's going to bring in real and consistent results. So kind of bring, see how all of it ties together, right? Because that was our first problem. You don't have a strategy or a plan. And because of that, you can't bring in real and consistent results because the marketing ain't consistent, right? So you see how all of this starts to come together. So that's the reason why for month one, we are going to be talking all about marketing in this group. All different ways for you to market your business and how to get it done so you can choose what fits your life your personality and your goals, and you could create a plan for this year. That's my goal for you this month, okay? So I'm gonna recap one more time. If you guys have any questions, please leave it below. Put your questions down now because I'm getting ready to leave you. Um, those of you who are in the replay, same thing. If you have questions, even though you're not here, if you leave your questions below, I can always come back and do some type of Q&A or just answer those questions for you, or I can answer it in the comments below if you guys have any questions regarding today, okay? Don't forget at the beginning of this training, I asked you guys a question. If you came late, please watch this over because I asked you guys a question in the beginning that I really want the answer for, okay? So let's recap these problems one more time, all right? Number one, not having a clear strategy and plan. So that means that by the end of January, you're gonna choose the strategy that works for you and you're gonna to look to see if you have to build out a plan or if you have to get someone to build out a plan for you. Number two, not knowing your client enough. So that means the messaging that you're putting in your marketing is not connecting because you don't know them enough. If you fall in that category, what is your job this month? Getting to know your client in the language that they use so you can do what? Create better marketing messages, okay? The next problem, not being clear on how you help them. Y'all know that this is what I do. So in the Market Your Message program, that's what we do. We bring you in. We help you craft your message, your story, figure out who it is that you're going to help, put together a system, step-by-step -step system so you can articulate how you're going to help them, right? And then uh, implementing a simple marketing strategy that will help you get clients, right? So this is what we do in the Market Your Message program. This is why we're talking about these things because this is what people are lacking. This is what people are lacking right here. Not knowing how, not being clear on how you help them. And because you're not clear, you can't articulate it. And because you can't articulate, your marketing is confusing or even you're confused so you don't do any marketing because you don't even know what to say. You could just tell me below, put an emoji if you could resonate with that, right? All right, here's the next one. And the next one is not being consistent. And we're talking about being consistent in showing up, being consistent in the messaging. Number six is not having a web presence that fits, you know? So your web presence is just not aligning. It's not instilling trust. And that's a problem. That is a big problem for 2020. That is what my, um, the person that I interviewed, that is one of the things that he said too. It's like, if you don't have a good web presence where people could come and clearly know how you help them and you fit the bill, then the other people who have it is going to get the client. Last one, number seven, using the wrong marketing strategy. So when you're deciding which one works for you, really choose one that fits. I have a client and I mean, I really love her strategy for this year because she knows where her strengths are. So she does really, really good challenges. So she's going to be doing a challenge every quarter. And then she loves to teach. So she's going to be doing her offline workshops and using her challenges to fill her online program, as well as sell tickets to her offline workshops. And when you have that type of clarity, it's like, really, what else is there to work on? I'm doing a challenge every quarter. I'm planning a workshop. So that means that I'm just going to be spending my time promoting that, building that, and that's it. It's clarity and simplicity, right? So you want to pick the right strategy so you could create a plan 
to reach those results. And that's what I want you guys to do. That's what I want to help you do. Okay. So if you're someone who, you know, you've been here with me for a while. Um, I missed number five, Anita. I did. Let me see what I missed. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Let me see. Not having a clear plan, not knowing your client, not being clear on how you help them, not being consistent, not your web presence and using the wrong marketing strategy. Oh, that's what I missed. I did miss something. It's right here. Stop with the me-centric marketing. <laughs> that was number five. Stop with the me-centric marketing. That was number five, okay? So no more me-centric marketing. It's client-centric marketing, right? So even when you're doing your storytelling, you may have a core story that lets people know about you um, so they can connect with you and resonate with you. But then when you start telling your stories and your marketing, your client needs to be the hero in the story, not you. What is your client's problem that they're facing? They need to be the hero in the story. So stop with the me-centric marketing. That was number five. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So for those of you who want to be able to implement this um, this year. Again, I'm going to be talking about marketing all month, but the reality is if you want to be able to do this faster and you want my help to be able to do this and you want to be able to spend the next year, 2020, in a program that is going to literally change the game for you, even when it comes to being in a community of other women that's like doing what you, you're doing and just you know, being in that type of community really builds momentum, right? Um, so if that's something that you're really looking for this year, I put a link in the comments. You can definitely book an appointment with me to see if you're a good fit for the Market Your Message program. That's all I have for you. I'm not selling you guys today. Um, now, my call is not free. My call is $97. However, if you are chosen to be a part of the program, you that will go towards your um, first payment, okay? So I just want to make sure I put that out there. Why do we do, why am I doing this? Because just like you, I'm leveling up too. I don't have no more time to play around with people who's not serious. I love everybody. Like I truly want to help everybody in my heart. Like God knows my heart. But at the end of the day, it hurts my heart to continue to help people who's not taking action. And it's not about paying for stuff. It's just about doing like, don't be that person that continues to learn and don't do anything. You understand what I'm saying? And because I'm looking to repel those people, I'm making certain changes in my business to make that happen. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do too. You understand? Because we don't have time anymore. Just like my interviewee said, we don't have time anymore. Every year, there's thousands of more coaches coming in this industry. How are you going to stand out? How are you going to be able to make a substantial amount of substantial amount of income in this industry? If you're not taking action, you're not showing up, you're not taking these stuff seriously, it's not going to work. If you can't, if you're not going to be willing to put together $97 to come on a call, how are you going to charge people $3,000 for a program? Come on. Anyway, I didn't come here for all of that. I hope that this was useful. <laughs> I hope that this was useful. Um, again, if you have any questions, I don't see any questions. Um, but I'm going to see you guys later. If you, if you think of anything, please leave it below. I'll see you all later. We'll be replaying this throughout the week. So at least those of you who missed it, you'll get a chance to see this again. I want to thank you so much for joining me. I want to make sure that you guys remember that we're going to be here every Monday. I'm going to be do, doing trainings every Monday. And they're absolutely free. It's just for members of this group. It's absolutely free, but it's just for members of this group, okay? So make sure that you guys show up because I'm gonna show up for you. So show up for yourself, all right? All right, guys, I'll see you later.